Hello everyone, it's Wednesday evening and I'm finally starting this reading vlog. I've been procrastinating on it. I've actually just been procrastinating on reading, I guess. So I have not done a whole lot of reading. I've just like, I'm reading three books at the same time at the moment. So I have like a morning book, I have a late evening book, and then I have my regular book. But I've basically just been reading like the one chapter in my morning book and then the two chapters in my evening book, but I haven't really been picking up my regular book yet. And that's just a combination of a couple of things, you know, I really wasn't feeling like reading on Monday, so I just chilled a little bit that evening. And then uh, yesterday, on Tuesday evening, I basically spent a lot of my time cooking and then I also had to edit the video that is coming out today on my channel. And so um, I ended up with not a whole lot of time to read. So to uh, also, I have been <laughs> another one that has been taking some of my time away is gymnastics. I've been watching some of the regionals from like two weeks ago or something that I didn't end up seeing at that point in time. And so that's like, I've watched two regionals at this point in time. So that's like five hours in total. So that's been taking up quite a little bit of my evening time. But so I want to now fully dive into my main read for this week because I'm very excited for it. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to do another sort of like disability and fantasy video for it. The first one of those still needs to go up. I have actually filmed it already, but I think I want to refilm it. I think I'm not really happy with I was in a, I was really struggling that day to make myself make sense, you know, the words were not coming, sentences were not flowing, and so I think I have like a super, like I think I have over an hour of footage for that, but that's mainly because I was struggling so much, so I think I want to refilm it before I actually put it out there into the world, so who knows when I'm finally gonna come out with my first installment of Disability and Fantasy. But so, book number two for that series, hopefully, is going to be Master of Sorrows by uh, Justin T. Call, I think is the title, is his author's name now. Uh, I have bought it very quickly when it came out. I no longer have the dust jacket, so that's why I have to show you guys the spine. But so this is a book, um, the way I was sold on this book, and I wish I knew in advance that it was going to possibly go into disability, because then I would have... I hope I would have pushed it more to the front. But so this is type of like prophecy type story in which you have this character who's kind of destined or believed to be the, a sort of like, um, you know, as if his destiny is going to be to destroy the world. And so basically as far as that we've seen at this point, but as I said, I am like nowhere in this book. <laughs> I'm really like... Um, 20 pages in or something like that. But so in the introduction we already have a whole lot of ableism because our protagonist is actually a young boy who is born at that point in time and he is born with only one hand. And as a result he is seen as being the son or a child of Kios. Kios I guess is how you're going to have to pronounce it, but my Dutch brain has made that chaos and I think that considering the prophecy of him being the one who's going to destroy everything. Chaos sounds like a good pronunciation for this name. Uh, and so they try to kill him. So that's already a lot of ableism there, the whole uh, association between disability and evil, very much reminiscent of like the changeling myth uh, that, or like not really myth, but the way in which people used to think that um, children born, born with disability were like changelings that they had been switched out by the fairies and things like that. And so this whole link that has been made between disability as a sign of evil uh, immediately makes me think that we're going to dive into some topics at least surrounding disability. And so hopefully there's enough there for me to do a full video on it. I have seen Ashley from A Frolic to Fiction read this book. That's why I knew that there was a disability representation within this one, which is why I pushed it more to the front because then I was like, okay, now I need to read this book. Before I was kind of pushing it back because I hadn't really heard too many people talk about this book yet. But um, I'm very excited to dive into it now. And so, as I said, I'm not that far into it. But we have also seen some of the sort of like origin myths of this world or of the gods within this world. And I really like the style of those myths and I really like the stories that we were told 
uh, surrounding the pantheon of this world. So I'm very much looking forward to the world building and things like that as well. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. We have a uh, set up for a magical school setting because our protagonist now has to go through a test in order to gain entry into the academy. Spoiler, I think the um, back of the book, the sort of... Um, what do you call that? The blur for the book already tells you that he go, that he is um, training to become an avatar. So yeah, I, I assume he's going to make it into the uh, academy. And so yeah, we'll have an academy setting uh, fantasy book with disability representation. Uh, really looking forward to it. The second book in the series is going to come out next month, but it's apparently like 900 pages long. So I don't know whether I'll immediately dive into it next month or not. On the other hand, if I put it off then that's possibly also going to stick around on my shelves for two more years so uh, we'll have to see what ends up happening with that one. Wednesday lunchtime and I... it's totally not Wednesday. <laughs> I did continue on with Master of Sorrows and I got a little bit more into it than the other days but I still like my reading pace is quite slow with that one. I don't know what to blame it on because it's not like I'm not enjoying myself while reading it. Um, but yeah, it's just going a little bit slower than some other books that I've been reading recently. So I'm still like hoping, I'm still aiming for 100 pages tonight, but that will be the first time this week that I actually managed to read 100 pages in an evening. So we'll have to see if that actually ends up happening or not. But so at this point in time, we're actually like, he isn't disabled. So I'm like intrigued because I, I mean, I did not just misread that right he did only have one hand when he was born and so my guess there is that the sort of person who took him in um has used magic to conceal his disfigurements to grow a hand or something for him um so it'll be interesting to kind of see how that develops because if that is the case, I'm gonna dive into that more than uh, with regards to disability representation. But so, um, I don't know at this point in time. At this point in time, I'm just like, hey, didn't this guy have a disability? It's an interesting world so far, as I already talked about. I like that sort of like inclusion of the mythology of this world, but also in terms of its magic system, because his children are training to become master artificers, um, to be it's not avatars, right? Um, but it seems like that doesn't necessarily mean that they are magical. They are training with magic, but magic seems to be a bad thing. It seems to be something frowned upon. And so there are these sort of like magic rods, which I'm assuming is just like a magic wand type of situation. And so um, part of what the avatars do is actually go out into the world, retrieving all of these magical rods in order for um, them to not be able to be used negatively and our protagonist already has kind of different opinion about that than the people who are training him because he kind of feels like some of these rods um you know aren't harmful they're only harmful if they fall into the hands of the wrong people whereas the trainers have the opinion that they are wrong and that um, regardless of who uses them they will always end up um causing damage so yeah some interesting aspects to it's already there but i am like 70 pages in at this point in time so hoping to get a little bit further into it tonight i never think i never know i'm stuck and left alone i've been lost i've been fine my cause is not defined Won't you kiss me? Won't you play? Won't you drive me? Ain't no way I could deny you I could strive Won't you kiss me? Ain't no way Won't you? Won't you? So I have read a little bit more in Master of Sorrows. I have read some like 60, 70 pages, something like that today. Um, and I might still read a little bit. I have another book that I always read two chapters from before I go to bed. So I'll first do that. And then depending on how much time or how awake I still am, um, I will still read a little bit more Master of Sorrows. I still need to do like 
35 pages to get to the end part one but I'm not entirely sure whether I have the time to do that I just finished editing tomorrow's vlog and so that is exporting now and then tomorrow morning when I wake up I will upload that and then after work I can then do the description things like that I won't have the CC up in time I think um, but you know that's something already um, but so as for Master of Sorrows last time that I updated it to you guys I was saying that I was going through it a little bit slow and that you know there had been that disability representation at the beginning but that I was confused about where it was we are definitely getting hints that it is as I expected that they're using magic to kind of hide his abilities but there's also some intrigue surrounding one of the like the person who's taken him in so there's more to his backstory than what he believes but also like we only had like a vague introduction to him but there's a lot more to this character clearly based off of what we've just been finding out now now um, we are still not at the test for him to enter into the academy but we've definitely had some sort of like tests and trials and tribulations and so it's interesting to look at this sort of like very competitive setup that has happened for these um boys to be able to become masked why I keep saying Master Artificers because that's the name of the sequel, but for them to become avatars. Um, and I like that sort of contradiction between the girls then, because there's also sort of like female counterpart training, and they are then very collaborative. They work together against the boys, and so I like that sort of element to it. There's also some representation for bullying, which always irks me, but like in a good way. I think it's good representation, and we need that type of representation. But those types of characters really irk me. Characters who are insecure about feeling that somebody else is better than them or more special or something like that and then they feel the need to put them down and then they take it out on that person that they they're just like saying yeah you feel you think you're, you're so above us whereas that person totally doesn't feel that way um but so yeah i've really been enjoying it and i've been tabbing a few things so the dark blue ones are disability representation i actually don't remember what the orange one was um but so yeah that's basically my update for this book now but so i have definitely been flying through it a lot quicker now so it's just a case that you know at the beginning of the book's pace is always a little bit slower just because especially with a fantasy in any case just because you know i'm not hooked immediately usually I, i'm not hooked from the first page i need a little bit more of a setup uh, and most of the books that i like actually have a little bit of a slower setup so um i am definitely enjoying it so far uh, i should not have put this book down for so long <laughs> i've definitely been enjoying it quite a lot now um and so after my two chapters in my other book i will continue on with this one for tonight <laughs> Friday evening um, I just had some Chinese had the same dish I usually had but then the vegetarian option this time around um, but you know I was feeling guilty over so much fish so I am happy with what I had and also had some mapo tofu which I was uh, hesitant about because mapo tofu should have meat in it but it was a variant without meat so uh, i was happy that <laughs> you know sometimes you as a vegetarian you become um, paranoid sometimes about food but so i am currently still reading master of sorrows and i've just gotten to the point where the book name is mentioned i always love it when you get to that point in a book where the title is mentioned so it just mentions master of sorrows and it's explaining what a master of sorrows is so I mean, I can assume we, this title is going to become relevant because it is the title of the book. But so, uh, yeah, I am very eager to continue on. I don't know whether I can say much about this book now or not. Probably not. Normally, my Friday evenings are kind of reserved for um, not reading. <laughs> I kind of try to make them like movie nights or something like that, but I wanted to reading night i've been 
Um, feeling like I haven't been reading a lot this week. So I've basically been feeling like I've been spending a lot of my time elsewhere. And so I wanted to dedicate some time to reading now. And so I'll be reading a little bit today still. Hoping to bridge the 200 page mark, but I'm like 10 pages away from finishing that. So I'll definitely hit the 200 page mark. And actually what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of doing a 24 in 48 weekend, meaning 24 hours of reading within a 48 hour time period, which is quite a lot because, you know, it's 12 hours of reading, you know, not just of being awake, but of actual reading in a full day um so we'll have to see but i'll i'm eager to take on that challenge Saturday morning and I'm immediately making changes because I am already in my opinion behind on the 24 for 48 hours and I realized that it is just a goal that I'm no longer striving for because you know I had miscalculated like I'd miss conceived how much reading time you need to do in order to get to 24 and 48 hours you know I thought like okay a 24 hour read a tom I've done it before it's fine if I have 48 hours to do it that's so much time but to do it in 48 hours you still kind of need to reduce your sleeping time for example uh, which I'm not I don't want to do that's not what my goal my goal is just to make sure that I spend a lot of my time on reading this weekend I want to kind of focus on it um, and at the same time, it's also NCA Gymnastics final weekend. And so I'm going to be spending quite a, a lot of my time watching gymnastics in any case this weekend. And for 24 hours and 48 hours, because I'm sleeping like seven to eight hours a day, that means that I only have like four or five hours free time per day. And I'm not a marathon reader, so I need regular breaks like every hour or so so it just like at this point i'm just like no that's not that doesn't sound like fun to me at this point in time especially since i'm just doing it for myself you know um so i'm reducing it to like 16 in 20 uh, in 48 hours so six so eight hours of pure reading per day this goal might still change it's just kind of a number that i'm using but so, um, yeah, goals have been adjusted here. Also, I wanted to film a video. I wanted to edit a few videos. Well, I mean, wanted. <laughs> I need to edit a few videos. So it just didn't make sense for me to continue on with the 24 in 48 hours. But so let me give a little bit of an update on Master of Sorrows by Justin Call because ah, this is amazing. I really am enjoying this read a whole lot. I will say that I was wrong about the premise or at, at some point in this... Um, Updates, I've been telling you guys that we know that he's going to become uh, an avatar, that he's going to succeed in the final test, but we actually don't know. I've rechecked because like I'm midway through the book and we still don't know. So I was like, maybe I misread that premise. And so I've just come off of a real high within the story and a high that was done so well. I will say that I knew the answer to the riddle that was proposed. So there was a test that they had to take and there was a riddle given at the beginning, at the start of the test. Um, and I, I knew the answer for that immediately. I mean, I already realized it's kind of before the riddle was even given. Um, so I did realize that. So I don't know whether that is something, an experience that every reader would have with this book or not, or whether I've just gotten too good at seeing like the foreshadowing that is put into books. Um, but regardless of that, I still highly enjoyed the sequence that came after it. It was a high-packed, high-energy tournament-type style uh, activity. So kind of that sort of Hunger Games vibe, you know, Harry Potter Book 4 vibes. Um, 
I haven't read a lot of those uh, types of books, so I cannot refer to a lot of them. But um, yeah, I really enjoy that sort of high energy uh, that was in that sequence and the way in which he was uh, kind of rebelling against the teachings that the Academy was giving of like to each to themselves and like um, just fight for yourself. And, um, you know, if you have to screw over your friends in order to achieve that, then so be it. Kind of like how he's um, struggling internally with that a lot. He's kind of unsure, like at times he feels like I should just do as everybody else is doing and let um, them fall and me uh, and sacrifice them for my advancements. Uh, whereas at other times his sort of like more noble upbringing is making him realize, no, there's no need for me to push my friends under the wagon in order to advance myself. So I, I like that sort of message that is in there. Um, and so, yeah, we'll probably get a decent chunk in today. I'm hoping to get like um, some 160 pages in today and 160 pages in tomorrow. And then I will be finishing it still within this vlog. Living here is such fun sometimes, guys, really. So not just is there a construction zone on that side of my apartment, there's construction over there as well as construction zone over there, but today they are drilling a hole in the pavement on the other side of that wall. So I'm actually remarkably happy that I currently am updating this clip without them actually disturbing me, but so I have been trying to read but it's been a bit difficult focusing when they're drilling a hole right behind my back. There they go again. Um, and also because the cats are used to the other construction zone. So they're used to that noise, not to this noise. And so the cats are also upset, so. This is actually better than before. I think it's a lower drill probably which why is it, which is why it's making less noise than the previous one <sighs> all right i'm cheating for a few minutes but i just received a package and i'm super excited because i uh, got a notification for shipping on thursday and I was hoping to get it on Friday, but I didn't. And when I checked the online store, it said it was going to be delivered like on the 22nd or something of April. And then my other package for which I got a delivery notification yesterday has arrived now. But now both of them are here. So I'm so happy because I was like very disappointed that the other one was only going to be here on the 22nd. But so uh, let's open it. Love and light that we must realize we need to feel we need to So I purchased, as you can see, a salt lamp. Um, basically, I just like the look of them. <laughs> They're supposed to have some benefits um, about, like, I don't know, some energy radiation into the room or something like that. But I don't necessarily believe in those things. Um, not necessarily that I don't fully believe in them neither. It's, it's just that I'm not really a believer neither. Uh, so I'm indifferent when it comes to that, but I do like the look of a salt lamp. So I've been considering one for a while now. And so I got one now because the place in which I was buying my earrings from had them. And so this is one of the earrings. So this one over here, um, which has, you know, a green stone at the bottom. I really love the color green. And then we have the problem. Like, I knew this was potentially a problem because... Um, I live alone, but I uh, have the other earring, which is this one, but closing this one is a 
bitch. <laughs> so I have not figured out yet how to do it. I will have to train a little bit in it. I had another earring once that had like two pieces and you had to kind of align the back piece with the front with the piece that had to go in front of the back piece and that also was one that at the beginning I was like unable to do and after a while it became super easy because I was just used to the feeling of how it had to feel in order for it to close but uh, this one so far it, I'm not having a lot of luck so um, I will just probably have to give it a rest for now um, because I want to still go on a walk today and so we are approaching like it's already past two o'clock I think at this point so I am going to go for that walk but I'm going to change into my Jurassic Park hoodie because that's how I am when I get something that I've ordered I need to do with I need to use it immediately <laughs> guys back from the center and i'm tired i mean i'm not mentally tired but my legs are super tired you know the first hour of walking fine second hour of walking less fine so i am in principle i wanted to go to the store to buy stuff including coke i'm out of coke and that's never a good thing but my legs are killing me <laughs> So we'll see. Um, I have also just made plans for uh, watching the gymnastics semi-finals with a friend of mine. So in two hours time, I'm going to go over her, to her place and then we're going to watch the gymnastics finals together. Um, but yeah, that means that I'm not reaching the eight hours reading time today that I had set out for myself. But hey. There's always tomorrow to catch up. I still have two hours. I can still get like um, to something like six and a half hours, seven hours for today. And so meaning that I wouldn't have to catch up to a whole lot tomorrow to still get to the 16 in 48 hours. So we'll see what ends up happening. Some self-sabotage today, guys. <laughs> Because I forgot to turn on my alarm clock for 6.30. So it's 8 o'clock now. My alarm clock just went off. <laughs> it's one of those funny cases as well where I've been awake for... I mean, I've been like semi-awake a few times already. And I've been like thinking like, hmm, my alarm clock still hasn't gone off. It still isn't 6.30. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's safe to say I'm probably not going to make the 16 hours neither. <laughs> Honestly, guys, I am so happy I picked this book up and I wish I would have picked it up sooner because this is like, I wish it said so on the blurb. I just reread the blurb too, but it doesn't say anywhere that our protagonist is disabled. I wish I would have known it from the get go because it's a, it, this is the type of representation I wish I would have grown up on, you know, I wish I would have had um with me 
to kind of deal with the internalized ableism. <laughs> Jesus. But so, um, I don't know, I'm possibly more um, emotional about reading this book now because I just filmed my first edition of Disability in Fantasy, the Elantris one. And uh, this sort of contrast between the stereotypical way in which disability is handled within a story where the emphasis is on finding a cure versus the way it is handled so far within this one is just amazing. I mean, I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to film a separate video about this one, but just know that um, this this is everything I could have wished for. Um, I am nearing like I am 100 and... 20 or so, 130 pages away from the end of this book. So I cannot go into anything when it comes to plot or something like that anymore, but it's just beautiful. And <laughs> it, yeah, I no, I really cannot dive into anything. So I will leave everything that I'm thinking now about this plot for when I'm doing my um, disability in fantasy video on this book, because it will give you too many hints about the way in which the story evolves and the sort of twists that it takes um, midway through the book. So, no. So, it's like 9.30 on Sunday. I'm definitely not making the 16 hours. I have read... 219 minutes today which I'm trying to calculate how long that is and apparently my brain is not working just under five right just under five hours I had to catch up for like over an hour of yesterday so I'm like midway through the goal for today I guess if we're gonna split it evenly by eight so no no way that I'm getting to the 16 hours but I am also very far already in Master Artifice, not Master Artifice, but Master of Sorrows. Uh, I've just been looking at the uh, pre-order link for Master Artifice, so that's why I'm confused. But so I am, where's my bookmark? Other side of the book. <laughs> I am very close to the ending. I am like page 502 or something like that, and it is like under 580 pages long. So I might try to do it so like I can read about 40 pages in an hour in this book so I'll definitely go for another full hour sprint now uh, and then I will take a little bit of a break again and then I'll do another hour long sprint. I usually in the evening also read in another book, my secret TBR book, uh, but I might I might skip it for tonight because uh, yeah, you know, I'm at the end of the book. I need to know what's going to go down, so. Good morning. Monday morning. I am not a Monday morning person at all. I mean, like, who actually is? But so, um, yeah, I am not being as productive yet at work. So I'm hoping to shift gears and really press that button, change into productivity mode. But so I'm here to wrap up the vlog. I finished Master of Sorrows yesterday uh, before bed, like really like, I don't know, quarter of an hour before midnight or something like that. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I will say like the final 50 pages or so were just like less intriguing to me, but that is also just because of what I personally like in fantasy and don't like. And so, um, there was a big sort of like a long sort of like battle sequence and so that's not necessarily something that really hooks me or grips me and so I felt myself at times being like yeah yeah, yeah sure come on wrap up uh, like <laughs> you know I'm sure that a whole lot of people when they're reading that are more concerned about the fate of the characters that they like and things like that whereas in my case I was kind of just like waiting for the battle to end so that we can continue on with the rest of the story but yeah I absolutely love this one and you know it's a new favorite I absolutely uh, master artifact ugh. Master Artificer is now one of my most anticipated releases for this year. I won't get around to it in May, 
because it is over a thousand pages <laughs> and so I might I will try to get a start on it already in May but I don't like I'm not engaging to finish it in May because that's just going to put stress on my reading in the month of May but so yeah absolutely enjoyed that one I would highly recommend it's got a very interesting disability representation it's doing it's taking disability in a fantasy setting to a very interesting place and so um, I hope more people will start picking it up. I will also tonight be watching the author interview that um, Ashley from A Frolic to Fiction did with Justin D. Cole um, last week, I think. I ha was just about to start his book at that time, so I didn't want to have the interview impact my reading experience, impact the way that I would read the book. And so I haven't checked it out at that time, but I will be doing so tonight. He also responded to a tweet that I sent after I was kind of like crying at that point in which I updated you guys. And so um, I'm just very happy with that I finally picked this one up because, you know, it's been one that has been kind of sitting around on my shelf and I wish that I had known from the get-go that it had disability representation and that disability was such a central part of what this book was talking about because then I would have definitely given it a higher priority earlier on. But so yeah, hope you, but so yeah as you can see I'm being harassed by a cat here now. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and uh, see you guys for the next one.